Right, today we're going to do an extension of what we did last week where we're going to take any face, it could be the one that you're working towards portraying eventually, and I want you just to sort of think of it, you don't have to literally divide it into sections with pencil, but if you take an organic section, I think that's much nicer than just like a, a box, I don't know, I just think an organically shaped section is quite nice. And then we're going to do the features with the same techniques that we learned last week, but then we're going to blend it into the skin because that's a bit of a skill. So I'm going to show a little bit more about skin tones and how to get that sort of light and dark right. And I thought it might be helpful to bring some of my previously done portraits with me as well. So you can see the sort of the way that I work, it's not always really photorealistic. It's a bit more experimental, um, but um, this is a watercolor portrait. It's obviously not finished and um, the, these are a lot more sort of dramatic. So I really like, um, and you'll know about this Jenny as well. I really, cause I always go on about contrast and I think the light and the dark and thinking about where your light source is um, can really help sometimes, you know, just contrast with, um, you know, playing about with colours. So I love adding blues in faces that aren't actually there. And, you know, the missed a gap and stuff. So I'm just sort of like playing around. These aren't really, I don't really see these as finished pieces, but just as more, you know, experimental pieces and things like that. So, um, yeah, so it just goes to show that you can be quite experimental, um, but also that the light source is really important in adding those shadows in. So that's something that I really wanted to go through today. So, so what I've done is, let's say this is the person that I'm going to depict. I've taken the eye and I've literally just drawn the eye on very lightly and I've not really added much detail there because I'm going to add all the detail in the paint. I've taken the nose shape, I've enlarged it a bit bigger than what it is in real life just to make it um, a little bit easier to <coughs> paint because the smaller something is, the trickier it is to paint. So you might want to bear that in mind for your when you're buying your canvas because next week we'll start on our canvases. So any size is fine. I'd say A4 at, at the very smallest, really. And then you want to get your colours and you're going to, um, I don't know why I put green out, I <laughs> just did it automatically really. She could have green eyes if I wanted to change them. You have got a bit of artistic licence, so as I say, you can add in colours that aren't supposed to be there, like I like to add in blue to the skin tone and things like that. And you are going to start with thinking about where are the lightest and the darkest tones. So what's the technique for identifying that people in my previous classes will know. No pressure. How do we identify where the lights and darkest tones are really easily? Where the light's coming from. Well, yeah, yeah, true. The highest, the, the point on her face, her nose, cheeks, forehead. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, the, yeah, you're right. The nose, the higher, the cheeks, the forehead are always going to be light because that's, and sort of the top of the chin, because that's, you know, the light's above you, it's gonna fall on those parts. But when you're looking at an object, whatever it is, whether it's person, whether it's tree, mm -hmm. how can you quickly tell what are the really dark and what are the really light areas? Squint. Yes. Yeah, sorry, squint. Yes. Oh, that's your word to me. Oh, and that English like that. word, yeah. Uh-uh. Squint. Squint. Squint your eyes out. Ah, okay. Squint. Okay. Squint. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 It takes away all the detail and it only enables you to see the very darkest tones and the very lightest tones. It erases the mid tones. So it, it helps you to see straight away. Oh, I can really see there's light there. I can really see there's dark there. So it's really, really helpful in terms of that. Now with watercolors, you have to always start with your lightest mm -hmm. and then you work up to your darkest, but it's not like that with um, acrylics because you can layer over. 
So you can either start with your darkest or your lightest. I mean, generally speaking, it is actually probably quite good to start with your lightest tones. But I've just added in my darkest there, and then I'm gonna add in my lightest. So I've got my really light one underneath there. Now, make sure you don't add too much water to this. <laughs> Especially if you've just come from doing a watercolor because it's really tricky. So I've added my light and I've added my dark. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just try and blend and intermix in between so that I can get that skin tone, if you see what I mean. I wasn't watching properly. What colors did you mix? Yes, yeah, sorry. I put the white, yeah. the yellow, yeah the that um oh, yeah that's the right one and um, a bit of the ready orange the brown and when i mix that together it made it quite warm so then um i added a little bit of a purple to cool it down a bit and just to dull it down because the skin is quite dull now it looks really really dark on there but it's actually lighter than my skin it, everything looks dark on the white paper. Do you see what I mean? It, depends, it, it looks dark on here, but you've got to test it against your skin. I did add a bit more pinky peach because her skin is quite pinky peach. Um, and I would say that a soft brush is quite good for this. So you want to have a brush that's quite, quite soft for blending the skin. So if you've got really stiff bristles, it's not gonna give you the smoothness of the skin. So that's something that's quite important. So you could do, yeah, absolutely. Because if you think about, um, you've got to think about this almost like makeup, you know, applying mm -hmm. foundation. Okay. And that's people use a blending uh, sponge, don't they, for yeah. foundation. So yeah. that can be, yeah, that can be something that's really, really helpful. Um, the other thing you want to think about is the direction of your brush strokes. So when, um, I think I mentioned this before, when Leonardo da Vinci was learning to draw people, he was really interested in the anatomy and thinking about actually there's a bone behind there. That's why there's a highlight there and trying to blend that in around the edges so that it gradually just starts to form. And then you can just end end the piece wherever you want to end it because it's an organic sort of section. So once you feel like you've got the hang of painting that sort of skin tone in that sort of area, then you can just kind of finish it where you feel comfortable sort of thing. But you can, you can see that it's starting to become a bit more dramatic there, yeah? With the nose area, <laughs> This is a little bit more tricky because, well, you, you already hopefully remember how to draw the nose and um, paint the nose from last time from doing it quite circular. However, adding in these curves here is tricky because you can quickly age the person by giving them wrinkles, basically. Mm. But we do have a curve there. So you That's want to kind of show that curve, but you don't want to show it too dramatically because you could age the person so if you do want to age a person so it's best do to it. do an age yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it's do you know what honestly i'm thinking in tiny then that's <laughs> but it's true i know i know it's laughable but that's what a lot of artists do they do paint old people because yeah. it's interesting it's mm -hmm. easier because you don't have to make the skin look as smooth, smooth. <laughs> honestly i know i know honestly and you know they say oh it's you know it's much more interesting to add you know the um the the wrinkles but i just think that's an excuse to be we honest them, we call them laughter lines yeah it's such an experience yes so I'm adding the lighter tones up around it. And the thing about acrylics as well is you can keep on layering. So if you're not happy with something or how smooth something is, you can keep on layering it. But the whole time I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the curve of the lips that are gonna be underneath that. So I'm following that sort of shape as well. And then down these edges, I'm following that curve. So. It's all the time thinking about how the skin falls, what's underneath the skin, 
and then blending in. Now, when I'm blending, um, I often, I'm often mixing with colors already on there and I'm not washing my brush a lot. I've not used a lot of water yeah. at all there. Um, and I'm working quite quickly because it does dry quite quickly. Um, so, you know, do work quickly because you've got nothing to lose on this. These are just, you know, testers and experiments, but um, if you aren't happy with something, when it does dry, you can go over it. So that's the good thing. But um, yeah, I'm just often picking up colors from underneath and then working back into them. Um, yeah, and then and then the lips pretty much the same process, but um, remember to add your white on the chin. There's a lot of white on this side for this person. And then your dark tends to be underneath and there's a lot more darker on this side. And what I'm gonna do there is, I'm gonna change to a bigger brush because it's a bigger area. So think about the brush size you're using. And I'm actually shading that in a bit of a curve shape so you get the sense that it is a curved chin. And there's actually hardly any water on there at all, but it's allowing me to smooth the paint and allow me to use it quite thickly. Did you, did you wet your brush at all? No, I didn't brush. No. <laughs> I, I use it quite thickly, but that's because I've, I, I really like oils and oil paints are really thick. Um, but I've hardly used any water at all on that. So if you wanted to get rid of a colour that was... You don't need to, I suppose, really, do you? You don't need to get rid of the colour on your brush. You no, I haven't. I haven't top. been changing yeah. my... You don't have to go back washing my brush. You don't need to do No, that. I haven't, because I quite like it when all the different colours intermix yeah. and you get a hint of a colour <laughs> that you've used previously, like the dark of the nose, if you get a hint of that in the light white bit. Sometimes it's... it it bring it kind of makes it cohesive yeah. mm -hmm. it makes it consistent and um, so I, I personally like that but i feel like you can get a sense of that shape now yeah. with that chin you can really see that the yeah. chin's round and you can see that the sides of the chin are smooth so you're saying do the chin first before the lips yeah, well, the lips, can you remember how to do those from last week and the, and the nose and the mouth, yeah. the With eyes? The circles. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. That's before drawing it. Before you colour it, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I would maybe paint them afterwards because they're they're so dark. Like the nostrils, I would paint afterwards, and the eye. I so I've done the skin first because that's lighter and and it's a bigger area. And then yeah. these are more finer details. So you always do your finer detail last. Okay. So when you're painting a portrait, you do all the skin and then do the finer detail last. Oh, okay. Because, and it always looks really weird when someone looks at one of my portrait paintings when they're half done because you've got all this skin and no eyes, you know. Yeah. And then as soon as you add in the eyes and the nose and the mouth, and they go, oh, wow, now it looks amazing That's sort of is, thing. Yeah. But um, it, it's like the last, it is the last stage, the finer brushes, mm -hmm. the finer detail. Because using bigger brushes here, and say you'd already painted the white of the eye and then you went over that mm. by accident, then yeah, it's, did, do you yeah. see, whereas if you go over that and then paint the white afterwards, then it's okay, Coming that up. makes sense, yeah. yeah. Okay. So is that okay then, guys? Do you want 